welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. In today's video, I'd like to demonstrate Yuhi Hive 2 software synthesizer and also showcase the amazing presets by a legendary sound designer, Howard Scar. These sounds are absolutely incredible. So who is Howard Scar, you might be asking? Well, just do a little Google search and you'll find out and be fairly impressed like I was. He does a lot of sound design work for lots of different companies, Yuhi of course, but also Spectrasonics, Roland, plenty more. We'll find a list of those in a second. But here you can see on the Spectrasonics tribute page uh, how he's been involved in the sound design, providing custom sounds for scores. Yes, he works with Hans Zimmer. And he's worked on the sounds of the Dark Knight, Transformers, Angels and Demons, and Inception. Plenty more as well. Yes, just look here on IMDB. He's done the synth programming for Inception, Dune, Blade Runner. He also did the new Matrix film as well. Just, uh, yeah, respect. So the nice thing is we have some macro knobs set up here as well. So I can adjust, for example, the filter, which is always on knob three here. Resonance. First knob just does interesting things to the sound. That's cool. Adjust the effects. The release. Wow, yes, so all of these presets are just a starting point. I've assigned up eight different macro knobs to really tweak the sound and take it in new directions, which is pretty awesome. is his own homepage. Yes, he's worked with Roland, Access, he did the Access Virus sounds, Hans Zimmer, Native Instruments, Waldorf, Steinberg and others. Hired by Hans Zimmer to provide Zebra 2 sounds, that's another Yuhi plugin for The Dark Knight. A few of his favourite synths, Yuhi Zebra 2. A lot of people have been telling me in the comments that this is the greatest soft synth of all time, so that's something I'll have to check out. I have looked but a few demonstrations and it looks to be a little bit uh, complicated and intimidating, at least for me. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm sure uh, it sounds pretty good and I'd love to check it out.
Let me give you a quick overview of the synthesizer. In this central hexagon section, we have some settings that are applied to the entire patch. We have an arpeggio you can switch on, step sequencer as well. Over here, we have the XY pads. You saw me manipulating, uh, if I click here, using my knobs here on the complete control, I can adjust these macro parameters, which do really interesting things to the sound, depending on how it's programmed. There's also a mode where you can see everything in one XY controller. Yeah, a lot of synths give you one XY controller. This one gives you four. We have the effects here, everything you could possibly want, I think, and more. You've already heard them in action. And we have a scope as well. which you've also seen me use. It looks pretty nice. You can display the waveforms here or any of the modulations, LFOs and so on as well, to really see and visualize what you're doing. Got a few more examples of Howard's uh, cinematic sounds. see our step sequencer in action. It is a two oscillator synthesizer. You can actually think of it as one set of oscillators, filters on this side, and the other set on this side over here. So one oscillator with a sub as well. You can also have wavetables. There's an example of that on this particular patch. You can load in wavetables and then configure them in this central section, but that's a little bit too deep for me right now. This is my first look at the instrument. But you can see we have an oscillator here, sub oscillator. We can run that through a filter. You can choose various different routings depending on how you want to combine the oscillators through the filters. Over here, oscillator two has its own filter as well. If you want to use that, you can combine them, chain them in parallel or series and so on. Over here, we have an amp and a modulation envelope that you could example assign to the filter that is mirrored here on this side as well. So plenty of envelopes. We have LFOs, conventional LFOs. We have a very sophisticated shape LFO where you can program in a various, see if I can find an example of that for you, various different shapes. Here we go, there was something there. Yeah, how you can create your own LFO shapes there. Function generators over here, which is inspired, I think, by the modular world. And I don't know how to use those. Down at the bottom, we have uh, different views. We can look at our modulation matrix. Matrix is matrix, matrix, down here anyway. Also very uh, powerful flexible if that's what you want, but you can also, I think, do fairly simple routings with it as well. Here is the keyboard section. So yeah, that's a pretty quick whistle stop tour of the user interface of Hive 2. If we jump to the presets panel here, the preset browser, 
you can see some notes from Howard. He says, play simple chords. Here's where you can see the macro controls as well. So let's follow his advice, play some simple chords. I'll do a, a major. choice of chord. Crazy. Yeah, a lot of Howard presets do use the sequencer here and various motion sequences in the LFOs, I think, to create really interesting effects. It's just incredible the amount of complexity that's going on there. <laughs> this one's very cleverly called appealing. Appealing because it is a. Peeling bell sound. Very cool. stuff. So what we've been doing today then is going into the presets browser, this panel here, which is very well done. I think you he have some of the very best uh, preset browsers out there. You can search on various banks that we have here. And what I've done actually today, you can also search on tags if you want to do that. You can favorite stuff as, as well by right clicking on them. I'll show you that in a second. But I've gone into the author and just filtered on Howard Scar's patches down here. And you can see that I've actually favorited some of these as well. I did scan through a few of these in advance of making the video and then favorited them just by going down here mark as favorite. You can have different banks of favorites as well. But yeah, this is how I filtered all the signs that were created by Howard. Down here, you can also see the macro knobs and what parameters they are currently assigned to, although this does change depending on the patch. But I've mapped all of these up to my complete control here. So by turning these knobs, I can directly access and manipulate the values of the macro knobs. And these macro knob positions are mirrored in the XY pad here. You can see the values changing there. If you prefer, you can have the multi XY view instead, which looks like that. So yeah, pretty powerful stuff. Okay, I've skipped over a few. We've come to base spaces here. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Interesting on the mod wheel. bottom end as well. Okay, this one entitled A Battle Begins perhaps typifies Howard Scar's cinematic work. Uh, let's take a listen.
<laughs> just astonishing. Really, really great work. So my camera just stopped recording. Thank you, Canon, for your 29-minute recording limit. I have no idea when it stopped, but I'll play again a few of the last presets that I demonstrated, uh, starting with this one, Big Sky, so I kind of know what to expect now. Oh, sorry. Just immense, un unbelievable. Amazing work. So the goal, I think, of Hive is to have, obviously, a great sounding synthesizer, and I think we've heard that for ourselves today, but also in a very approachable user interface. Pretty much everything is available and immediately accessible to you here on the front panel. going on there is some kind of modulation of the filter resonance or the filter cutoff which is having a lovely resonant peak some kind of yeah some kind of interesting filter going on there yeah pretty beautiful nevertheless a beautiful pad that you could kind of break in the most wonderful ways. Yeah, I love that.
another of the goals of Hive is to be lightweight on your CPU resources. I haven't done any tests, but I haven't either run into any problems during this demonstration, despite some of these patches being rather complex with a lot of really nice sounding effects. If you do want to learn more about Howard Scar, and I encourage you to do so because he's a really interesting and inspiring gentleman, then do go ahead and check out the Sonic State interview with Howard and Urs Heckman, who happens to be the founder of Uhi, hence the name, Urs Heckman, you can see it in the name there, Uhi, and another one of their fantastic sound designers, Victor Weimar. There's Urs there on the screen right now. What a, and Nick, of course, what a, collection of fantastic legends. This is a superb interview. Do go and check it out. Oh, there we go. I got a clip of Victor for you there as well to complete the trio. <laughs> it's some kind of warped, synthesized cathedral pipe organ. Yes, I hope you agree. Those sounds were absolutely epic. Thank you so much to Howard for creating these amazing patches for us to enjoy. It's not easy being a sound designer. It's something that I struggle with. So I'm really grateful to the hard work by Howard and all of the other fantastic sound designers for making such wonderful presets for us to play and enjoy. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. Cheerio. Let me read for you Howard's Life's Unfortunate Truths Applying to Synth Enthusiasts. Number one, your powers of composition are inversely proportional to the quality of your studio. So very true. Number two, think of a sound, any sound. Someone has already used it in a Madonna song. Not sure I'd agree with that. In the late 80s, you sold a TB303 for $30 and passed up on a Mini Moog for $200. That is very true. The more often your band rehearses, the worse 
that really important gig will be. And number five, however carefully you open the can of sardines, you will get oil on the keyboard. <laughs>